This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Ooh, is it the really pretty seaside cliff? I leave our school and head to the location in question. It probably is. Oh, I think it is! Michiru probably headed for that high ridge overlooking the sea. Yes! That was such a beautiful area. It's a quiet space where she won't be disturbed, and she seems to find it pleasant. I doubt there are many other places that meet those criteria for her. Hey, here we go. And yet, Michiru isn't here. No matter how much I look, I don't see our familiar bottle blonde dimwit. Well, that's not nice. That's a beautiful little scene, though. Damn. Have my instincts grown dull? Hmm? That cry. I turn in the direction of the sound toward the very first area I checked. At the time, I quickly determined Michiru wasn't there. Now, I notice a blonde girl seated on the grass. How did you miss her before? But despite that distinctive golden hair and the Mahama Academy uniform she's wearing, I can't convince myself that girl is Michiru. There's another blonde-haired girl here? What? Very strange. Are these errors of judgment on my part? Perhaps my perception of reality has been warped by spending so long inside that hermetically sealed pocket of eccentricity they call a school. Michiru? Answer me. Aw, oh, she's petting the kitty! Ah, that's a nice CG. I, oh yeah, that's right. It's the little black cat that we saw uh, earlier on in the playthrough, the one that was on her head for a short time. Oh yay! Ah, that's a cute CG. No, I've got the wrong person after all. At least that's what it feels like. But the number of people who wear this uniform is very small. Logically speaking, there can't be any mistake. The girl in front of me has the exact same face as Matsushima Michiru in every single perceivable way. But the closer I look, the more she seems like someone else entirely. What's going on here? A very subtle change in some visual detail can dramatically change a person's impression. But this isn't that sort of a spot the differences puzzle. To put the matter plainly, this Michiru simply is not Michiru. I can understand now why my eyes slid right over her at first. Of course, I'm now left with a far greater mystery. Who is this Michiru I see before me? Um, it's her. She's just not, not freaking out all the time. Who are you? And so I ask her point blank. I'm well aware that it's a strange question, but there just doesn't seem to be any other way to phrase it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Expression changed. The imposter Michiru is staring out at the ocean, a small black cat curled up in her lap. She looks perfectly healthy, there's no indication of distress on her face. If anything, you'd think she rolled out of bed at noon and took a little stroll to enjoy the fine weather. She appears utterly relaxed. Is Rommel doing well? I emphasize the name as if to definitively slap a label on the cat. Michiru tor turns toward me, a quizzical expression on her face. I don't know which Rommel you're talking to. There's no way I can answer that question. More importantly, which Michiru are you? You're not that Michiru, I'm pretty sure. What is going on? Um, what is going on? This is weird. This girl doesn't stumble in conversing with me. She banters back with perfect composure. She's also... Is she... Is this a different voice actress? This actually does seem like a different voice actress voicing her. Hmm. At the very least, I don't think you're the Michiru I know. What is happening? Uh, mind explaining in more detail? I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah, this is weird. This is definitely a completely... 
Yeah, she's acting real weird. I don't think the girl's deliberately trying to confuse me, but this attitude is somewhat irritating. Reminds me of a mean-spirited adult teasing a child while holding an empty cookie jar behind their back. Now that you mention it, I think I may have slept with books more often than women. I'm 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 thinking right now. And right now what I'm what I'm hoping happens is that Michiru has a twin and they're both living here, but they like take turns. I think that will be an amazing twist. And I, that could be really interesting. Probably not, but that would be that would be pretty awesome. I'd probably just say, come with me. Of course, I'm fully capable of utilizing honeyed words instead, if the situation necessitates them. That a fact. I can't say I remember running across anyone like you, either. Have we been introduced yet? Mitri lets out a brief, amused chuckle. Wasn't exactly a difficult guess. You like this place well enough to designate it as your final resting place, after all. Oh, yeah! That, oh, yeah, there was that really creepy conversation where she's like, I want to be buried here. That was weird. <laughs> Sorry, you're losing me again. Who's that girl supposed to be? Precise clear phrasing. Must say, though, you're now on the insipid side of things. <laughs> say what? I see. Hmm, no, surely I don't talk like that. He sure clears her throat with an affected ahem. I do remember that. That's right. Those stories are complete nonsense invented to control people for superstitious terror and fraudulent promises of salvation. Not true! But hey, whatever, he's entitled to his opinion. Of course, once you die, your brain becomes nothing more than a rotting piece of meat, so it can't exactly hurt to think what you want while you're alive. Flawed reasoning. It's not like you're ever going to realize you were wrong. If the idea of a heaven waiting for you makes life more bearable, you may as well believe in it. I mean, Yuji is 17, thinks he knows everything. I'm not prone to that particular delusion, no. I understand that death is something like an endless, dreamless sleep. I also disagree with that. Yeah, more or less. What are you talking about? A corpse rising from the grave? Well, I have heard stories about people who went into a comatose state who were mistakenly identified as dead. Every once in a while, a corpse pops up off of the bed and scares the hell out of everyone in the room. Well, 
次の朝が来ちゃったらどうするってこと Sorry, what? わからないでしょわかんないんだつまり君にもわかんないことがあるってこと Well, you just said a really weird hypothetical, so of course we're not going to know the answer to it. <laughs> True. Ooh. See, I knew Michiru was definitely smarter than she was letting herself on to be. I think she's pretending to be stupid. But I, there's definitely more to her than just that, it seems. Not particularly. When we could just die early and skip the pain? Is that where you're going with this? She sounds like Yumiko's voice actor. Hmm. If you think your life to be yours alone, I suppose you're free to die whenever you want. But in the vast majority of cases, people can't live alone. Your existence incurs costs on others. Specifically, you're alive because someone else spent money to keep you that way. What? Until those debts are paid, letting yourself die would be pretty damn selfish, don't you think? <laughs> This is one of the weirder worldviews I've heard. Somehow this Michiru has managed to drag me into a truly cryptic conversation. It feels like I'm struggling to complete a puzzle with no possible solution. If there's some point to her questions, it completely eludes me. Human beings are too full of themselves. That's the only reason they worry about questions of no answer. Like the meaning of life. Every other animal is concerned with the struggle of their daily existence and very little else. We really shouldn't be any different. Where did this ridiculous ego come from, anyway? Things probably went off track back when we first started picking up rocks and hitting each other with them. You have an interesting view of history. Good for you. I quit. This pointless conversation is officially over. I'm going back to the dorm. Well, that was cryptic. I turned my back on Michiru, resolved to cut off this unproductive debate. But after a few steps, I come to my senses. This isn't exactly a satisfying conclusion. I was just teased into ignominious retreat by a cheeky little girl. I turned back and faced Michiru once more. Yeah! Oh yeah, that's right, this game has terrible cat sound effects. The black cat, apparently startled by my motion, leaps off of Michiru's lap and bolts away through the tall grass. Huh? Michiru looks perfectly fine now, but at school she was pressing her head into her chest and grimacing in pain. That wasn't the first time I've seen it happen, and by some strange coincidence, the previous case also occurred after someone brought up the topic of best friends. The instant Michiru heard those words, her health deteriorated dramatically. It was the same today. That may not be all there is to this, but at the very least it should be the key that leads me to an answer. Ooh! I do- Yeah, see, that is supposed to be Michiru's normal voice. So I'm pretty sure this is where we can either ignore the Michiru route or go on the Michiru route, and I'm pretty sure we, if we ask her something, it's Michiru route, so... <laughs> Just like Sedif once said, I have something to ask of you. Michiru, I want to ask you something. <laughs> he does ask weird questions. None of the above. I want to know if you have a best friend. I carefully state my inquiry, watching Michiru's face intently. I expected some sort of telling reaction but there don't seem to be any results worth mentioning. Michiru thinks the matter over for a moment. The casual expression on her face suggests a woman pondering her dinner menu. Because you're avoiding the topic. Whenever the conversation shifts to friendship, best friends in particular, 
You immediately begin to act strangely, maybe because her best friend is her twin sister. Thought it might have some connection to your sudden illness. Hmm. Interesting answer. Oh, how, how horribly depressing. That's a pretty pessimistic way of looking at it. Hmm. Alright. I understand your thinking on the matter. I'll be heading back now. This time I'm fully ready to take my leave, but apparently Michiru is unsatisfied with this conclusion, as she immediately calls out to stop me. Sorry, what about me? Can't say I have anyone I could confidently describe that way. Don't have one of those either. Why are you asking? Yeah, you want to know why I'm popular? Because I'm the only guy in this school. <laughs> why do you... What is happening? This can't be... Okay, now I know why Yuji didn't think this is the same Michiru. Yeah, she seems like a completely different person here. So, a couple things could be happening. I kind of have three different theories in my head right now. Number one, this is actually Michiru, and she's kind of showing us her true personality, and she, the whole Sundere, like, freak out, stupid, blonde thing is just a complete act that she's putting on for some reason. Number two is that there are two Michirus, and they're identical twins, and we're talking to the much more chill and quiet of the two. And the third option is that maybe she has m multiple personalities. If that's the case, the mul I mean, the both twins and multi per multiple personalities would kind of come out of nowhere. So that's where I'm like, I'm kind of thinking this actually just might be her true personality. Or like, how, what she's truly like, and she just kind of puts on a mask for, in front of the others. Don't know why that is. But this is not how I expected the Michiru route to start. I see. So this is what they call idle curiosity. Yes. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> so help me, if he responds with one to find out, I'm done. Out of respect for your admirable attempt at brevity, I'll keep my answer simple as well. A kiss is a moment of contact between two sets of mucoase membranes. What? Well, you know what? He didn't... He didn't say want to find out. So you know what? Good good on you, Yuji. But also, that's like... Literally, the, that's like the definition you would find in a really dry science textbook. I think she knows what a kiss is. <laughs> oh yeah, mucoase membranes. Very simple. Oh, she... Wow! Did not expect her to be the one to say, I want to find out. Mind if I kiss you. What the heck? This is weird. Not particularly, I suppose. So is our relationship literally starting with her being like, Hey, I want to know what a kiss feels like. Can I kiss you? It's like, yeah, okay. Oh, we should date now. Michiru rises up on tiptoe and draws her face close. Without a moment's hesitation, she presses her mouth to mine. Our moist mucoise membranes softly adhere to each other. This is like the dumbest description of a kiss ever. But at least it's not really over the top and raunchy. 
Apparently concerned about knocking her nose against mine, Michiru tilts her face slightly to one side. A tuft of blonde hair brushes against my cheek, tickling my nose with the citrusy scent of her shampoo. She's like, ugh, that sucked! Why do people like kissing? <laughs> Michiru runs her tongue over her lips and creases her brow thoughtfully. That's a shame. But would you mind telling me why you suddenly... Hmm. Say what? Are you going somewhere? Explain yourself. Michiru? That you? Alright, I think that confirms multiple personalities. Was not expecting that. Okay, yeah, she definitely has multiple personalities. Not the twist I was expecting. Funny fiend, Michiru. Hmm, how exactly should I interpret this? Seems we're back to the old Michiru. Yo, long time no see. Glad to see that you're doing well. I was somewhat concerned. Uh, so I don't know how multiple personality disorders work, but is it literally just like you kind of toggle between one and another? You don't really have any choice over it, and you don't remember what one personality does, or I don't even know. I'm guessing that they're taking some creative liberties here for the purposes of storytelling. Anything strange? Have you ever said anything to me that wasn't? Oh, settle down. I do want an explanation of all this, but I suppose it can wait. You're tired, aren't you? Let's head back to the school. Yes, yes, fine. I'm going to leave you behind now. Yes and no! I'm kind of disappointed. I was think- Hmm. So I'm, just, I'm going with the- She has at least two personalities. So it could be like... The Sundari is her main personality, or the other one's her alternate one. I don't know which one's the, like, main one. It could be, though, that, like, if she's genuinely as stupid as she is, maybe it's because half her time is spent in the other personality and she doesn't remember anything. That also would explain why she struggles in school, because she's basically only learning half the material. I don't know how this works, but that could be the case. The girl speaks truth. I'm somewhat exhausted at present. It wasn't exactly easy. I hope all this is sufficient to satisfy you, Amine. It's just weird, because we've basically only seen Tsundere Michiru before, so this, this is kind of coming out of left field. Come to think of it, like, the only other time we've seen alternate Michiru might have been when she, like, stole the weird satchel that Sachi made for us, and it was like, hey, Makina, you should have this instead. Where I'm like, oh, she's smarter than she seems. That might have been alternate Michiru. Love the music, though. Well, she might have been brushing you off, but you can't deny that she did it with an admirably light touch. Well, 
Okay. Siesta! Michiru, are you really alright? That's not what I'm referring to. I'm talking about your physical health. I see. Well, we're on your route, so... I feel like it's gonna happen again, but you know what? Maybe this will be a chased route. That would be great. You're the one who approached me. Michiru, my friend, I think you might have meant deceit. Her incoherent babbling apparently concluded for the moment Michiru stalks off. There have always been things about the girl I found hard to understand, but today her incomprehensibility reached new heights. I think I'm going to have to keep an eye on her from now on. <laughs> 